Hello audience, and welcome to my dorm room where I make sure to unplug my fridge so it doesn't destroy the audio quality with its whirring sound. Today I'm going to go through the mindset shift that is changing my life, and I will teach you guys how to go through it as well, and how I got everything I wanted in life through this simple change in mindset. To start off, I want to go through a story about how just one simple mindset shift allowed me to get anything that I wanted. And the first part of that was me manifesting money. So a few years ago when the manifestation trend was rising on TikTok super rapidly, I was honestly a huge skeptic. But when I saw this one video, it told me to just try it out. So I gave it a thought and I gave it one day to prove itself to me in a sense. And I manifested money thinking that there was no way that it was going to happen. But on that day, I went to my family friend's house and I was playing board games in my friend's room and out of the blue, I found a quarter in her room. And I'm not the one to find random coins in my house or my friend's houses. So that was the first sign that I needed to understand the power of mindset shift and framing my world in a place that is one of abundance and luckiness rather than one of desperation and neediness. So what is the mindset shift exactly that I went through? The mindset shift that so many of us hold and that I held for so long was one of desperation, one of neediness. And this mindset that held me back was exactly described in that character trait. In other words, the desperation mindset was one where I saw the world as something that had scarcity. Whenever I wanted, there was competition. There was something that I had to do that was unachievable. There was a lot of obstacles holding me back. And that desperation was so making my life much worse than it could have been. Anything I saw, I saw it with through a lens of pessimism. I didn't know what to do with my life because I felt like everything had an obstacle that was insurmountable. It was a sort of depress depressive effect where I just couldn't get anything done. And I thought in any aspect of my life, whether it be my friendships, my health, my own body, my relationships, I thought everything was going downhill, down the drain, because I just couldn't see the world for the true abundance that it offered. And although it may sound simple, when I started reading about these sort of mindset shifts and looking into ways to make my life more abundant, I started seeing the world through a clearer lens. And this lens fully allowed me to change my life from one of neediness, from one of me clinging on to the few people who seemed to stay in my life, to me attracting everything that I wanted and more than what I ever could have asked for. So that desperation mindset was the one that I was in. And I'm going to go through a few categories of the ways that I went from that desperation mindset to an abundance mindset and how it showed in my life, specifically in friends, my health, and my relationships. So in terms of the abundance mindset, the abundance mindset is one of full clarity and full understanding in life. It's one of full trust in the world. When going from desperation to abundance, it is important that I had some sort of proof about the abundance of the world. And the reason I brought that story up of the quarter was because that was proof in itself that the world could provide abundance to my life when I was just simply putting in the effort to change my viewpoint. I have another story of this because I had a sort of affirmation that I would read out to myself for every morning for a couple of weeks that I tried. And one of it was, I am lucky, or I'm the luckiest person alive. And I swear that when I said that, my entire day and the way I viewed my life shifted completely. I would go around on the street and I would just notice small things like the light being green when I wanted to cross the crosswalk or the vibe that I was giving off and the happy energy that people would have when they saw me. I would get random things for free. And it would just be random stuff like that, that completely made my day and it was even better and it was even more abundant in my life because I noticed it and I took pride and happiness in noticing it rather than taking on a pessimistic outlook of for example expecting things to happen in a way when I just let things happen the way where they were supposed to happen and took the things that happened that were good in a very grateful mindset that is when abundance started coming into my life and that was when i was able to see that i had so many options i had so much variety to choose from and from that i was able to improve my life to reach the goals that i wanted so how do i translate this mindset into different aspects of my life the first is through friendship i had a few phases in terms of how i handled friends and how i handled modern friendships in general the one major thing that's different about friendships today is the fact that in general Texting is a major form of communication. Phone calls aren't used as often, and we don't really see people that much unless we are in a routine with them or if we make the effort to text and hang out with them. In 
environments like school, work, or university, this is more common where we see people physically, but in general, texting is one of the most major avenues of communication that I use when I want to reach out to friends, especially when, for example, school is on break and I want to talk to somebody that's not in my family or in my friends from my hometown. So the mindset shift of desperation in terms of friendship is quite simple. I would text a few people that I really wanted to hang out with and I would be very desperate to see what their response was. I would be texting them and I would put so much pressure on myself to see what their external response would be. And that external outcome had a determination of my value in my own life. So when I was putting all this pressure on, for example, one or two of my really close friends to act like they were my best friends and to support my entire emotional state, it obviously deterred them from wanting to spend time with me. In fact, I would text friends over the summer during my freshman year and I would expect them to not respond and I would be sort of proving to myself that people were mean and people were negative. But in reality, I was literally just putting faith in a few people to always be the ones to, for example, call or text back or to always be on top of everything. Everybody has their own issues is one of the things that I've realized. And in the sense, nobody can be a perfect friend. And it is when I took that pressure off of friends that I went into a mindset of abundance. And in general, in a mindset of abundance, I saw that there were so many opportunities to hang out with friends, to make friends, to interact with friends in different settings. And if I stopped putting pressure on myself to become really good friends with, for example, one or two people, and I expanded my social circle to be friends with a bunch of people and hang out with a bunch of people, then I wouldn't feel this desperation of, for example, someone not responding or responding really late to a request to get lunch or to hang out. So when I shifted from, for example, putting so much pressure on a few friends to texting a bunch of friends that I knew if they wanted to do something, for example, hey, let's get dinner at seven tomorrow and seeing how they respond, then I completely changed my vibe with all of my friends. I was going from somebody who wanted them to be there, who was hoping that they wouldn't leave, to somebody who was fine if they didn't respond or was fine if they were busy that day. Ghosting is a huge thing with text and a lot of the times people do forget. I'm one to stay highly on top of it, although I have missed a text a couple of times. I do understand that, for example, friends can be have huge different texting styles, whether some people are more sporadic, some people have dozens of unread messages or marked messages that they need to respond to. I understand everybody's different and it's with that mindset and understanding and empathy that this abundance mindset has shifted into my friendships and my friendship circles. If people don't want to do something with me, then I know that there's going to be someone who will. And if no one wants to do it with me, then I simply reflect on why the invitation I sent wasn't something that people wanted to do. For example, if I were to say, oh, let's see a movie versus, oh, let's see this movie that has a 90% rating of from the movie critics who has this star in it and is about this, then perhaps that's more enticing than just simply asking people to do something out of the blue. And then with this, there's a compounding effect. So for example, if one friend ends up wanting to do something with me, even if that friend in particular isn't one that is one of my best close friends that I vibe completely with, I can use that as leverage to get other people to want to hang out with me because in a sense, I'm abusing FOMO. But the abundance mindset is basically used in friendships to show that I have a lot of people I can reach out to, I can always make new friends, and it's with that that my energy becomes so much more free and it's less needy. I don't force people to stay with me when they're trying to do something. If people need to go, it's fine. But in general, when I reach out to friends, it's one, it's in a way that I'm being vulnerable but not needy. If they don't want to come, it's fine because I don't want people to force themselves to be with me. Now, that also applies in a sense to relationships. There's different types of people when it comes to this, but it goes for both sides. If you're a woman looking for a relationship or if you're a man looking for a relationship, then it, it goes both ways. That in the sense, people tend to get stuck onto one relationship or one person. There tends to be an obsession that happens. And then with that, we tend to put a lot of desperation into the way we text other people. But if we were to simply reframe our views and see the abundance of people who we'd want to be in a relationship with in our lives, just from the activities we do or just passing us on the street, then it completely changed my mindset about how to look at forming relationships with people and how to not put so much pressure on myself to see if this person were for, to, for example, like me. In fact, as a shift into the abundance mindset, it's more of the fact that it should be you asking yourself, is this person a good fit for me? Because in the end, there's 
hundreds of thousands of people in your community that you could get into a relationship with and it's not healthy to focus on one person to be that perfect partner in fact in general if i were to get into a relationship or be in a relationship then that exact pressure to be perfect in the partner is something that deters them it is important to be abundant within oneself and it's important to be content with oneself to have fun with oneself to be proud of doing stuff by oneself before one can put abundance into a relationship because with friends with partners if we put pressure on the other person to make our lives better then we're going to be extremely disappointed in the fact that every human is flawed and every human cannot make up for our own lack of self-worth and our own lack of self-esteem the final way that i want to describe the abundance mindset is through losing weight so particularly when i was going through a major portion of my weight loss journey i had this whole idea where i was stuck on this weight and i couldn't understand why i was not losing the weight that i wanted to and it's only when i realized that i wasn't supposed to be as restrictive with myself and that there were healthier alternatives that were more in abundance and something that I could snack on rather than restricting my amount of eating that made me enjoy the process much more. And this is all within a healthy weight range, so I'm not advocating for anything unhealthy. But what I am saying is that in general, for example, I was a huge, I still am in a sense, a huge sweet tooth. I love candy, I love sweet things. And when I was restricting those desserts for myself, I realized over time that it just made me feel sluggish when I ate them. But when I ate fruit again for the first time and I had finished a meal and I didn't feel sluggish afterward, it was a whole shift in my mindset. I was eating a meal and I felt like completely re-energized after I ate it. And it's from that abundance mindset where I could eat stuff that I wanted to. I could eat a variety of food and feel satiated and happy with my meal and still have abundance of flavors and different tastes during my meals that I realized that being healthy and being at a healthy weight was not something that was supposed to be hard, but rather was something that was the result of bad habits compiling and a negative mindset that I would have to restrict myself from desserts. I have desserts once in a while now, but it's nothing like before where I would crave unhealthy snacks. In fact, what I usually do now is I try to have a healthy alternative before I even think about going for a necessarily unhealthy alternative. So a fruit like a banana, some berries, a strawberry, stuff like that was something that I tend to stick to now before I, for example, ask, oh, like, let's get a cookie or ice cream. Because in the end, I know that I'm not going to even feel satiated by those more unhealthy desserts but in moderation i don't see an issue with that and in general it shouldn't be so much pressure on myself to go and lose so much weight by restricting myself in every aspect because in the end it's not going to be sustainable so in general the one guidance that i left myself with in this abundance mindset is that i have to be content with being myself with being alone and living the life that i want to in a balance in the end, I know that I created my own life. I created my own balance in terms of the goals that I wanted to achieve and the people I wanted to hang out with and spend time with. And if I see friends or people that I don't want to spend time with because they just drain my energy, then the abundance mindset allows me to stay out of those negative relationships because I have so many other people that I can reach out to. And I can recognize my own worth because I recognize the value of myself. In the end, I just think that I create my own balance or that you create your own balance. And in general, you create your own life. Thanks for watching and I'll see you guys next week. Bye.